Hey everyone, welcome to Leo the Lefty. I'm Leo, and today I'm going to talk to you about Jack the Ripper. Woohoo! Um, and this is going to be my art piece. I decided it kind of went along with our theme a little bit, even though I wasn't trying to do this. I, uh, I drew this months ago, and I just picked her because I thought, A, it's kind of appropriate, and B, I think that I can get through this whole, uh, you know, piece of art in the time it'll take me to tell you the case. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to talk for a minute um, about the endless, endless sea of books that is, uh, and that are on the market for Jack the Ripper. I mean, when I tell you that there are just hundreds out there, um, years ago, I read a couple but, you know, when I tried to Google them, because I couldn't remember the names of the authors or anything like that, I tried to Google them, and, you know, hundreds came up. So, I can't tell you what I read when I was a teenager. I'm not sure. Um, there's so many, so I, I can't tell you which one it was or which couple that I read back in the probably uh, late 90s or maybe the mid to early 90s, I don't know, I'm, I'm 40, so, you know, I was a kid then, so yeah, it's been a few years, I can't really remember what I was reading, uh, what authors I was reading back then, uh, by the way, I got a new camera, this is my first, um, shot with it, so we'll see how the audio sounds, I think the picture is a little better, it seems a little crisper, um, but I also had an issue with my uh, desk-mounted uh, tripod, and so this is actually, uh, this new camera is on a tripod that I got with a ring light, and so it's, um, you know, messed around with the angles and everything, and this is really the best I can do. And also, I am using pastels today, which I will put down in the description. Um, they're cheapy dollar store pastels, nothing fancy. Anyway, back to it. So, you know, the books I read, I can't remember who and what I read. It doesn't really matter. Um, I didn't refer to any of them in my sources for this case anyway. Um, this is a very famous case, obviously. If you're here, you know that. And you're probably interested in the subject as well. Um, I'll tell you the reasons why I decided to do this. Um, is because of the connection to the Johnny Gill case. The, that was my first case. If you haven't um, watched that video yet, go check it out. It's a very interesting case, and it has some Jack the Ripper connections. Um, I won't give you any spoilers on that right now, um, but just know that there is some rudimentary Jack the, the Ripper connections in the Johnny Gill case, so... If you'd like to go check that out, that is episode one, my very first one. And so this is going to be a tricky case. Um, I'll say right now, if you consider yourself a Ripperologist, you, <laughs> you might want to turn this off or hate watch it. I, either way, I'm fine with that, you know, um, I'm I, I'm in no way an expert on the topic. I, you know, had to do research and everything. I, I know generally about it, of course, as everyone does. And, you know, I haven't been living under a complete rock my whole life. So, of course, I knew about it. But um, I am by no means a ripperologist, and if you consider yourself one, this is probably going to piss you off. And that's fine. You can either not watch, or you can come at me in the comments. I am just about down for anything, honestly. Um, so, hey, let me know what you think. If you watch it, if you hate it, if you love it, whatever. Um, we're going to talk about the crimes themselves, um, and... Then we'll get kind of into suspects and theories and things like that towards the end. But I'll tell you all about what happened. And this is, it's, Jack the Ripper is so hard. It's a very convoluted case because, you know, 
His identity was never discovered. So everything after you get past the facts is speculation. The facts are the victims. Those are the ones, you know, that we know about. There's no speculation on who those women were. We know their identities, and if you ever bothered or cared to look into their lives, you can know their lives too. Um, I'll put my resources down in the description, uh, of course, but, <laughs> and if you are a ripperologist, this is really going to piss you off, but I can recommend a great book if you want to hear about the victims themselves and not just all about the, the killer. The book is called The Five. And it is by Hallie Rubenhold, and it is very good. And she also has a podcast called Bad Women, um, Jack the Ripper story. And it is very, very good. And I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to know more about the victims. Um, and she goes into a lot of why this was probably never solved. And a lot of it is because the generalizations of the victims... Um, assuming all of the victims were sex workers, which they weren't, but even if they were, that does not mean that they deserved what happened to them. And that's kind of a sticking point for a lot of people that are into this subject. They get a little defensive when you try to say that maybe the women weren't sex workers because that was something put out by the police to kind of, oh, you know, quell a panic among the population. So, um, I've seen some ripperologists get pretty pissed off when you make the mere suggestion that some of these women weren't sex workers. Maybe some of them turn to sex work every once in a while, but... There's not a whole lot of evidence that shows that most of them were sex workers. Um, most of them had different kinds of work and jobs and things like that. Um, they had families. They had children. They had husbands. They had uh, mothers and fathers. Yes, they were normal people. They had people who loved them. They had people who missed them. So, you know, that's kind of... The women always get lost in this story. The women are always the ones who, you know, the horrible deed was done to them and then everybody shifts their focus to who Jack the Ripper was. And it's almost like it doesn't matter um, that these women were so brutally murdered. And that's pretty fucked up. So we'll get into it. Um, I will discuss the timeline and the crime itself and all of that so you know you can hear their names there are some other suspects and then I mean not like you care really but I'll give my personal opinions on some things and like I said some of you may like it some of you may hate it I'm fine either way everybody's entitled to their opinion you know so that's fine um, I'm trying to be you know I don't want to walk on eggshells because I really don't care who I piss off. I don't want to offend anybody intentionally, but I also don't want to pretend as if, you know, I agree with everything they say on this topic because I don't. I, I don't believe um, that a lot of these women were sex workers and I don't believe that they were disposable and that they deserved what they got just because they were out at night. Um, Spoiler alert, women should be able to walk around at night without being murdered. If you didn't know that, um, I'm happy to help you out there. So, you know, these women, it doesn't matter why they were out at night. It doesn't matter if they were sex workers or not. And if it doesn't matter if that's what they were doing when they were killed. It doesn't matter. You don't have the right to murder somebody just because they're out on the damn street at night. Okay, and I wish more people understood that. And people who are murdered out on the street at night didn't deserve it, okay? So if you have that opinion, um, this is really going to piss you off because I don't share that opinion. I'm vehemently against the opinion that these women deserved what happened to them. And I'm also very much against the opinion that a lot of them were sex workers. But even if they were, doesn't matter. 
they didn't deserve this. So, we can get into it if you're still here, if you haven't gotten mad and left yet, which if you have, bye bye um, Maybe I'll see you later, maybe I won't. Um, if I do, great. If not, um, have a good life. See you on your way. Um, I, I'm not going to apologize for my opinions. Um, I'm not going to fight with anybody over my opinion. My opinion is my opinion and yours is yours, but I just have a feeling that if, if anybody sees this, it's going to piss a lot of people off because there's a lot of, uh, you know, stigma on this case as to the identities of the victims, um, their occupations, and whether or not they deserve to be murdered for those occupations. So, now that we've gotten that part out of the way, I'm going to darken her eyes a little bit. So yeah, now that we've gotten that part out of the way, um, let's get into the timeline. Actually, let me check my notes real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so um, what we know is from the, the most popular parts of the case are the canonical five. And these are the five murders that people mostly attribute to Jack the Ripper. And of course, then there are an additional six victims that people think are. And, and then there are some other extra victims that people think could be it too. So we'll go through all that and everything, but uh, we'll break it down and discuss it. I hope y'all can see this. I'm trying to give her like... Uh, kind of some dark circles under her eyes. Maybe I'll go in with a little bit of gray. Let's see here. I want her to, you know, she's basically like a very pretty living dead girl, you know? So I want her to have that hollow-eyed look. I know that doesn't look great at first, but then we'll smudge it out and see what we got with it. And this is just one of my art hankies that I use for my pastels to do some smudging. Okay. What do y'all think? We'll probably get back to that. I haven't decided what color I'm going to make her eyes yet, so we'll decide. But while I'm working on all of that, we'll finish coloring the rest of her skin. Okay, so we're going to talk about the canonical five and the additional suspected victims. Uh, you know, I, we'll get into my theories on the additional victims and, and the canonical five and the identity of Jack the Ripper and the, the myths around it, the legends around it, the uh, investigation. We'll discuss a little bit of all of it, okay? Oops, I bent my paper. No. I'm a failure. Okay. So, I'm going to color this in. And hopefully, it'll all come together and you'll see what I'm working with here. And I really hope the audio works on this too. Okay. Um, and I'll list off some of the suspects that, you know, the police thought at the time, and then over time, people have de developed theories. Um, I know Patricia Cornwell has a theory, and no, I didn't read her book. Um, truth be told, I'm not that interested in Jack the Ripper. Um, it's been a little bit played out, and since the, we don't know the identity, it's really hard to delve into the psychology other than, you know, some basic profiling. And, and that's when I know who a killer is and I can hear about their life and maybe what uh, compelled them to do it. That's sort of where my interest comes in, but some phantom ghost that has never been discovered where you can speculate about anything uh, as far as their identity goes. Um, I sort of lose interest. I'm the same way with the Zodiac Killer. Uh, man alive, do I find that sort of boring. I'm sorry. I know that some people, like, 
live their whole lives trying to figure out who the Zodiac is. And some people live their whole lives trying to figure out who Jack the Ripper is. But, you know, as much of as an interest as I have in true crime, and I've got some background, not really. I mean, I went to school for um, forensics and criminal justice and criminal psychology and all that, but I never worked in the field because reasons. I have a strong mistrust of the police, <laughs> so I didn't want to become the police. But anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, I don't like serial killers. I, I, I don't think they're cool or should be um, so idolized. Like, they're not rock stars, guys, you know? And, and so... For me, it's very slippery slope to, uh, you know, invest a lot of energy in a serial killer. I just don't like doing it because I do feel like it aggrandizes them and I don't like doing that. I don't like giving them credit for being um, a murderer. Like, why is that? A good thing to be praised for. So, you know, and I, I'm not a big fan of uh, serial killer groupies. Um, to each their own, you know, that's fine, but it's not my thing. I, I don't praise and adore serial killers. I am interested in the criminal psychology of why they do what they do, but I also think that they're pieces of shit and that when you cause harm and pain on such a scale that, you know, yeah, well, you're probably not that worthy of being praised. And, you know, there's a lot better people out there in the world I can waste my energy on. And I'm not going to do it to serial killers. Uh, you're never going to hear me cover... Ted Bundy or Jeffrey Dahmer or anything like that. I, I really won't cover any modern cases. I don't want to harm families of victims that are alive today and still able to hear their family member being talked about. So I have vowed to only do cases that are like, you know, closer to 100 years or older, maybe a little bit younger than 100 years. But I, I, I want to do it because I don't want to hurt any family members out there and seeing, you know, their loved one once again, somebody else covered their case and blah, 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 and that's content for them, you know. So I'm doing older cases. Now, don't get me wrong. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot of books, true crime and otherwise, but I'm just going to stick to the older cases when I do true crime. I won't always do true crime. I'll do some history and other things like that. But when I do true crime, I'm going to do older cases to where there's nobody left alive of the victims that can be harmed by, you know, hearing the case and all that. So that's why I'm doing older cases and everything. And it just, if, if I know that somebody's parents, a murder victim's parents aren't alive and having to hear um, somebody else talk about their child's murder or something. I just feel like that's for the best. So I'm just not going to get into that territory. Um, so that's why I've chosen to do much older cases. And, you know, sometimes I may go way, way back to like medieval murders or whatever. But anyway, I feel like I've gotten far enough off track and into a tangent that we can get into the actual crime now. And I hope you can hear my stomach growling. I'm sorry about that. So we're going to discuss the area first. This is Whitechapel, um, London, and this is a very, very poor area of town. Um, poverty is rampant in these areas and, um, Everyone is doing the best they can to just get by, you know. It, it's it's hard. And nobody is guaranteed 
any sort of food or assistance or housing or anything like that in this area. It's just a very poor area. And because of that, it's also a very crime-ridden area. There's lots of robberies, and there's lots of fighting. There's quite a few murders, but, um, you know, we'll find out that the reason why these murders stuck out so much is A, because of their brutality, and B, you know, the press just went ape shit with this and really hyped it up and... and which caused people to, you know, send in hoax letters, which, I mean, it, it just, it got out of control. It got very, very out of control. Alright, so I'm trying to give her, like, some highlights, and then we'll go back in with some other colors to make it pretty, but I'm trying to we'll blend it a little bit. Maybe, what should we do? Should we do some lighter pink, maybe, just to blend in there? Okay, and I don't know if you can hear the um, classic pug noises in the background, but she is a snoring, folks. So we'll see if this new camera picks that up on the audio. I don't have a way to put a mic on this camera, so I'm really hoping the audio is doing okay. We'll see, and hopefully I won't have to reshoot this, because I really like this picture for this one. Alright, let's get into it, what you all came for. So, we're going to start. It's London, Whitechapel, in the East End, in 1888. It's the Victorian era, um, and it's... The poor side of town and everybody's doing the best they can to get by but that doesn't mean everybody is a sex worker I can't stress that enough really my god um, that there's a you know a tendency to think that all poor women resort to sex work to get by and that's just not true but I mean they really perpetuated that idea um, in this case Oh, almost forgot everything down here. Alright, so we're going to start with Marianne Nichols. Um, I, you know, I didn't get ages on these women, a lot of them, but they're, you know, kind of all over the place in ages. There's some in their mid-40s, and then there's 30s and 20s and things like that, so... Um, being a crime of opportunity, which I think most of these were, it wasn't... You know, the victimology stopped at, there's a woman alone. I'm looking for a woman alone. I, You know, there's no certain, like, oh, they weren't looking for a certain hair color. They weren't looking for, you know, anything like that, special features or anything. They were looking for women who were alone. So, Marianne Nichols, um, the day is going to be August 31st, 1888 at 3.40 a.m. Her body is discovered. Um at Ducks Row, um, which is now called Dullward Street. Sorry, I'm having to look at my notes here. Um, so her injuries consisted of um, her throat being severed with two deep cuts. Her vagina was stabbed twice. The lower ab abdomen excuse me, was um, partly ripped open and her bowels were protruding. And there are certain markers in these cases as to why everybody thought that maybe perhaps Johnny Gill was uh, one of Jack the Ripper's victims. I digress. Anyway, um, several other incisions on both sides of her abdomen inflicted in a downward motion. So she was pretty messed up. And, um, you know, I'm sure at first they thought it was a one-off and just a very brutal murder. And kind of... You know, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to put some red streaks in here for her. I think that'll look cool. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Alright, the next victim is going to be Annie Chapman. And this is September 8th, 1888. 
at 6 a.m. near the steps uh, to a doorway of the backyard on 29 Hanbury Street in Spitalfields. Um, Annie's body was found. Again, throat severed with two deep cuts. And um, the abdomen was entirely cut open uh, with a piece of flesh from the stomach placed on her shoulder. Which, you know, sounds pretty horrific. Um, and they said placed. They made it sound like it was intentional, not like it you know, happened during the struggle or whatever. It sounded like it was intentional. Like, a, you know, just a different form of uh, posing the body. But, and, you know, the body parts and everything. Um, another section of flesh and intestine on the right shoulder. Uh, the uterus and sections of the bladder and vagina were also removed. So... You know, up with Marianne Nichols, we just have a horrible, brutal attack. And with Annie here, we're starting to see um, the same brutality, but it seems like he's taking more time. If indeed it's the same person, and he's, you know, uh, playing around, exploring, for lack of a better word, um, deciding what he's going to uh, get into, I guess, pretty sick fuck, for sure, because this is, this is beyond attacking, this is dissecting, this is, you know, getting into some, uh, sicker territory than just somebody who attacks, um, for purposes of, you know, robbery or sexual assault or whatever, which neither women so far had uh, any appearance of being sexually assaulted, and so, you know, that's the first two, Um, now we're going to move on to what's called the double event, which this theory, I don't know. I mean, I really, when I was younger and before I really, really dove into it, I was like, oh, you know, he did the double event, which is not uncommon. Um, a lot of dork ass serial killers do a double event. I don't know why. I don't know if they know why. But anyway, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes on September 30th, 1888. And people believe that this is the double event because he was, you know, interrupted in the first attack. And so he went and found another woman to, you know, get that aggression and satisfaction and all of that kind of crap. So, I don't know. We'll... We'll just say for the sake of this that sure, you know, it's the same dude and it's a double attack and that's why he did it. Who knows, though, really. People don't know shit they think they know. Ugh, and I don't know how to do this without bending my paper. Making it look terrible. Okay. I hope that looks okay on camera. It's starting to come together here. I'm going to go in for a little bit darker blue in some areas where I got some white showing through. So Stride's body was found at 1 a.m. in Dudfield's yard off of Burner Street, now um, Henrique Street. Henrique is uh, Henry. Anyway, um, a single clear-cut incision six inches across the neck severed. Uh, oh my god carotid artery. I, I'm trying to read my own left-handed ass handwriting and I just sabotage myself and made myself look like an idiot and I'll try to clean that up in editing or maybe I'll leave it in and continue looking like an idiot. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, carotid artery um, and the trachea before stopping beneath the right jaw. So this was all the injury she had was the cutthroat. So you know they think oh he was interrupted and he moved on to Edo's. Um, at 2 a.m., so, what, just, uh, like an hour later, Edo's body is found. Um, throat severed ear to ear. The abdomen was ripped open with a long, deep, jagged wound. The intestines were placed on the right shoulder with a section of intestine being completely detached and placed between her body and left arm. The left kidney and a major part of the uterus were removed. Um, I, I believe those weren't found, you know. Um, her face had been uh, mutilated. Her nose was severed. Her cheeks were slashed. 
and there was cuts from a quarter to a half inch to an inch long across the eyelids and a triangular incision with the apex pointing towards the eye like like this basically uh if there had been a triangle pointing it to, towards the eye um carved on each cheek so it was like you know little clown triangles they put on clowns under the eye that's at this point whoever did that is like they're going for a look like they're definitely into something specific you know um stride she could have just been had her throat cut because she got into a argument with somebody or was being robbed or something but um Eddowes was definitely like he took some time with her and had an agenda to mutilate um what what color do we want to do her dress let's do let's do green since we don't have much green on here right now y'all my dog is I'm sorry she is such a pain in the butt she's a pug so she's aggressively stupid and on everything get back get back don't fall sometimes she falls off the bed because she does her digging little nest thing and I'm just like worried she's gonna hurt herself she never has because she's so cushiony anyway um, so, and then, um, a, a piece of, um, Edo's ear was also removed from her ear and found later in her clothing when they got her to the morgue. So, yeah, um, that, was that intentional? Did that just happen in the struggle? Mm, who knows, you know, since it was bunched up in her clothing, I, I don't know, um, but that was a very brutal, very vicious attack on her. And by then, like, there was a, the moniker Jack the Ripper was out there in the press. And everybody was losing their freaking minds. And, you know, it was highly sensational. But also, people wanted that shit stopped. Especially the people that lived in the area that had to be near that kind of danger and everything. And so finally, you know, the police were like, oh, you know, maybe we should look into this. Even though we don't care about these women, we should probably look into this. So, you know, the, the press is, is interested, and so therefore the police are interested. Um, and... Uh, we'll talk about, like, uh, letters and communications from the killer and all that here in just a little bit. Um, let's see here. A section of Edo's uh, bloody apron was found at an entrance to a, a tenement, Golston Street, at 2.55 a.m., which, do they really know it was hers? I mean, I don't know. There's talk of a shawl found that's just taken as, oh, you know, she, this is definitely her shawl and everything, and, um, this is a side note, by the way, about the shawl, and, you know, we don't actually know if it belonged to the person they said it belonged to, it really could have belonged to anybody, but somebody said they saw her wearing that shawl, so all these, you know, century, uh, centuries, uh, decades, it has been taken that it was her shawl, but we don't actually know that, you know. There's a lot of things that are taken as fact in this case that really aren't facts, they're just retold so often that they become, uh, thought of as facts, but, uh, are they actually? We don't know. Here, I'm gonna get a Q-tip to do the smudging on this, because I don't want to Smudge it too far out of the lines. I'm sorry. I keep, like, forgetting that I'm doing this in front of a camera and just covering everything with my hand. That is the tragedy of being a lefty. And I'm sorry. You had to hear me kind of sing there. That was awful, and I'll never do it again, I promise. 
Okay, we're going to get that colored in a little bit. I'm going to clean this up some. It's okay if it has a little green glow about it. We'll give it a green glow. That way it looks more purposeful. Okay. Um, so next we have Mary Jane Kelly, which was November 5th, or November 9th, excuse me, 1888, in her room at 13 Miller's Court off Dorset Street in Spitalfields. Woo! Okay, this one is bad, guys. This one is so bad. Um, before I get into it, let me grab my markers and everything, because I'm going to do her eyes in markers. And... Goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm sorry, I should have been better prepared. I'm actually trying to record this video real quick um, on my afternoon off because I have so much to do. December is very busy for me, which is why I haven't put anything out in a couple of weeks, and I'm so sorry, but, you know, I don't really have any followers, so y'all don't care. Nobody's counting on this right now, but in the future, if I get followers who come back and see this later... That's what's going on in the December of 2023 for Leo the Lefty. There, that's finally starting to show up, but maybe let's give her pretty purple eyes. Let's make sure. Yeah, that's working. Let me finish coloring in her eyeballs, guys, and then I'll get back to the um, description of... Uh, Mary Jane Kelly and her murder because it is quite brutal as I said this one is going to be different this one takes place in her room not out on the street again you should be allowed to be in your room and not be murdered but I guess some people don't feel that way you know people who murder people in their rooms Ooh, creepy. Let's make her have uh, gold irises, just because. Why not? And then we're going to do her wounds and the blood with a marker because this looks too pink. Is that working? Or am I going to have to find the other red? There it is. Let's do, yeah, there we go. That's better. That's better. Yeah, so this is my hand drawing. I named her Morgane, um, just because I like that name from the Arthur legends and everything. But like I said, I drew this months ago. I didn't even... Hadn't even thought about covering Jack the Ripper when I drew this, but because I drew it, I just felt it was very fitting for the case. Because she's a beautiful dead woman. Okay, so let's get into the description of Mary Jane Kelly um, and her murder, because it is terrible. So, her face was hacked beyond all recognition. Her throat was severed to the spine. She was nearly decapitated. Um, let's see here. Her abdomen almost emptied of organs. Uh, uterus, kidneys, and one breast placed beneath her head. Other viscera is how they described it. Placed beside her foot on the bed. Her um, abdomen, like her abdomen, the skin was open and laying across her thighs. And her heart was missing from the scene and never found. So, you know, at this point, he's taking uh, shit with him. Because he's a sick fuck, y'all. That's who Jack the Ripper is. Is one sick fuck. Alright, how does that look in the camera? How does that look? Oh, see, that's showing up much better. Now y'all can kind of see what I'm doing. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, there was ashes found in the fireplace. Uh, and they thought that possibly something had been burned in her fireplace. I don't know what that means. Like, what they thought was burned or whatever. Um... So, yeah, that's the canonical five. Those are the ones that they believe, you know, Jack the Ripper is responsible for all five of them. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's just, I'm just telling you the canonical five. I don't necessarily believe that. But, you know, who knows? Maybe. Oh, there's my other dog, Lulu. She is in the kitchen barking. I'm sure you can hear her. Anyway. So... Let's run through some of the possible other victims. The other six, they call them, what, oh god, I didn't write it down. I think it's like the Whitechapel 11 or some shit like that. I don't know, something that has a way of like robbing them of their identities and grouping them all together, like some sort of mass grave or something is kind of messed up, but whatever. That's just how it goes. Um... Especially whenever people believe it's a serial killer, like, that whole person gets reduced, their whole identity gets reduced to being one of the serial killer's victims, and I just, I think that's so shitty, like, their whole lives, they, they lived and led whole lives before the one thing that ended it, and that's the one thing they're remembered for, and I think it is just shit, so anyway, Emma Elizabeth Smith, um, was... Robbed and sexually assaulted on April 3rd, 1888. Um, she had a cut ear. She had a blunt object inserted inside of her. It didn't say what that was. I don't, I, I do not know what, what it was. I don't, we don't want to know. Um, but she was alive when she was taken to the hospital. And she said that she was attacked by either two or three men. So I have honestly no idea why this is even linked to Jack the Ripper. It. It doesn't fit anything, anything known about the case at all. So we're not in this episode, in my opinion, in Leo the Lefty world, dear El Emma Elizabeth Smith was the victim of some other horrible men and, you know, rest her soul. But I do not think she was a victim of Jack the Ripper. I think she was just the victim of some other horrible ass entitled men that thought they were, um, you know, entitled to her body, which obviously they were not. And sometimes when men are denied access to a woman's body, they kill them. Yep. It's really, really fucked up, but that's what it is. Okay. So anyway, Martha Tabram, August 7th, 1888. 39 stab wounds to the throat, lungs, liver, spleen, heart, and she had some genital mutilation. This sounds like a anger attack to me. I don't think it was Jack the Ripper. Um, I can see why some people might. And they think, oh, maybe this was one of his first victims and he hadn't escalated yet and blah, 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 blah. But I just don't believe that she was one of his victims either. But I'm, I'm just going through the list of other possible victims that we are given in the research because I want to you know cover all the bases giving her some cute little turquoise streaks see she's very pretty you guys you're beautiful Morgane so yeah I don't think that um, Martha Tabram was one of the victims of Jack the Ripper either the next one is Rose Milet, December 20th, 1888, and she was found strangled. Um, originally, police suspected that she had either died by suicide or accident. Um, okay. But in the inquest, the jury came back with a verdict of homicide. And, I mean, that's really where that's left. They didn't catch or prosecute anyone for her supposed murder. I mean, it sounds like murder to me, but, you know, the police thought it was some sort of accident or suicide, but the uh, coroner's inquest found for homicide. 
and you know you just gotta leave that where it is the next is Alice McKenzie uh, July 17th 1889 she had two stab wounds to the neck a seven inch long superficial wound extending from the left breast to the navel um, I don't know if any of them are linked that one sounds like it possibly could be but um, you know I don't know if, if it is he kind of de-escalated or and you know I, I didn't get any information on where these women's bodies were found so, you know, I don't know if he, she was found outside and therefore he could have been interrupted with her too. Or if this was in a, you know, a boarding house or a home or a hotel or, or what. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just telling you what I know. All right. And so the next one, before we get into this, um, I'm going to do a case on the Thames Mysteries later some point I don't know it may be my next case it may not be but just because it sort of links to this case the Thames mysteries were uh, torsos body parts and all that kind of stuff that kept washing up in the Thames River um, the Thames whatever you want to call it however it's Thames Thames whatever I you know it depends I'm a silly redneck from the southwest in the United States, so I probably don't say everything correctly, but I'm doing the best I can. What do y'all think? I think she came out really pretty. So, the Pinchant Street torso um, was found beneath the railway arch on Pinchant Street, and it was an unidentified woman, 30 to 40 years old, on September 10th, um, 1889. And it was just the torso. There were no legs, no arms. But the abdomen had been extensively mutilated. And, um, again, like I said, we'll get into all that later. And then there was Frances Coles, February 13th, 1891. Beneath the railway arch at Swallow Gardens, Whitechapel, throat cut, and, um, a man named James Thomas Sadler was charged and then acquitted later on of her murder. So it remains unsolved. Now, that sounds interesting that these last two, the, the Pinchant Street Torso and Francis Coles, were both found under railway arches. Now, is that a whole separate serial killer? Is there the railway arch serial killer and just nobody ever caught on to it? Or is it just a coincidence? I don't know. Again, you know, I'm just reporting what's out there all right I, I really want her to have darker eyes let's give her some dark circles you guys I think my cat is knocking on heaven's door hold on okay I'm back sorry Something y'all should know is um, <clears throat> my cat is a terrible person. If she can interrupt you, she will. She has no remorse. She's very petty and demanding. And I love her. Because she is... Like, she's the best cat. But everything I love about her would make her a terrible person. That, you know, you would dread if she came over for Christmas or whatever. Because she's awful. And I love her so much. Okay, so that was um, the other six of what is supposed to be the possible other Jack the Ripper victims. Now, there are some in there that clearly are not. Like, it's ridiculous to think some of those are. Some of the others, maybe. And then some of the others, I'm like, I think that's a whole-ass different serial killer. Hmm. And I just don't think that people understood it at the time. Okay, I think I finally am getting her eyes dark enough. What do you think, sweetheart? Now let's find a dark purple. And give her some lines in her eyes to make him a little more detailed and pop a little bit. 
Okay, so let's talk about suspects. Now, this part doesn't matter that much because we'll never know. I mean, we can speculate endlessly and wildly, but we're never actually going to know who the killer was. And, I mean, there's plenty of people out there that think they for sure solved it and that they know for sure. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know that we actually know that. I hope y'all, I, I don't know if y'all can hear my cat. She's now, like, rummaging through stuff and being as loud as possible. She's stepping on a plastic bag right now. Um, so, she's so wonderful. Now, there was speculation. There was all kinds of suspects at the time. Like, you know, some people thought the suspect was a butcher, a doctor, um, a Jewish person. Like, simply because they just didn't like Jewish people. Like, what? Okay. Um, so, it, it's kind of all over the place as to um, the suspect list, but we'll talk about uh, Montag DeWitt, who was a barrister and a teacher, and he was said to have an interest in surgery. Not sure what else made him a suspect other than those things. That's just what I saw online. Uh, Michael, or, well, it's probably... Hmm, Mishael, because it, he, Mishael Ostrog, a Russian physician and criminal, it just said criminal, I don't know what kind of criminal, and then Aaron Kosominski um, was a Polish Jewish immigrant, and he was said to have a, a, a strong dislike for women in general, but especially sex workers. He didn't like them. And he spent a lot of time in and out of mental institutions. And he was said to be very violent and erratic. Which, for me, that right there, erratic, puts him out of the running. Um, for all the shit I talk about Jack the Ripper, that dude was not erratic. He knew exactly what he was doing. So, um, also... I think that the Jack the Ripper is actually only responsible for maybe two or three of the murders. I don't think he's responsible for all of the canonical five or even the others, uh, the rest of the Whitechapel murders. And then um, I believe it's Patricia Cornwell. Her theory is that um, Walter Sickert, an, an artist, was the murderer. And I'm pretty sure she's like hardcore on this theory, which, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't read her books, but she put a lot of time and work and research and energy into her book and her theory, so I won't discount it. I just, I don't know enough, because I didn't read it. I wasn't trying to read a whole ass Jack the River book for this, y'all, except for I did read, um, Hallie Rubenhold's book, The Five, but I wanted to read about the victims and not the speculations of the killer, and so that's why I read her book, and it's it's very good. I'll uh, put it down in my sources, which I didn't, you know, I didn't use her really as a source so much because she, like I said, she talks about the victims, but I did just really appreciate her book. So I'm giving it five stars. And um, also her podcast is very, very good as well. Okay, next we have Sir William Gull, who was um, a physician. Don't know much else, but there was a lot of speculation then and now that Jack the Ripper was a part of the nobility or um, high class, wealthy, what have you. So there's a few um, uh, you know, higher up names thrown around there. Uh, Lewis Carroll, the author, yes, the author was thrown around as a possibility of being Jack the Ripper. I don't know why. I'm, I, I, I might look into that later and just see why, because that's interesting, you know, 
Is it just because he was known at the time, or was somebody pissed off at him, or was he weird and somebody thought, hey, maybe? I don't know, you know. And then uh, Sir Melvin McNaughton. I don't know anything about him other than uh, he was a suspect also. Let's see here. I think we're going to try to do... Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Prince Albert Victor was even a suspect, which I think that's just a whole, like, eat the rich type situation. They were like, well, he could do this and get away with it. But I don't think there was actually ever any evidence pointing to that. And I'm going to tell y'all, um, I have a very special theory, um, given to me by someone very special to be my daughter. My daughter has her own theory on who Jack the Ripper was, and to me, it almost makes the most sense because he was never caught, and she believes that it was a pterodactyl in a trench coat. And you know what? From everything else I've heard, it's not that far off from the why not. So, uh, yeah, pterodactyl in a trench coat, why not? I mean, it, we've... we've Assumed it might be everyone else, so why not a pterodactyl in a trench coat, you know? Um, and then I'm going to tell y'all my theory. This is my own personal theory. I came up with it myself because I have a very strong opinion about it. And um, I believe with all my heart that I am right, just like everybody else who has a suspect in mind believes with all their heart that they are right. But I do believe that Jack the Ripper was, are you ready for it? My neighbor, Alan. That's right. I think he did it. I know he did it. That dude is weird, okay? And I would not put any of this past him. I think he's into some crazy shit, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he is into time travel and serial murder. Yes, I am putting you on blast, Alan. I don't know if you're ever going to see this, but if you do, I am watching you, dude. But I can't help it because you're always outside doing weird stuff. I don't want to be watching you. But I have to because you're always around doing some weird shit that makes me suspect you of other weird shit. Okay? I know I'm, I'm going off on a rant here, but I swear to God, Alan, one of these days, I'm going to catch you. And I'm going to expose you to the world and I'm going to show everyone what kind of crazy madness I have been living next to. And I... You guys, I'm losing my mind over here. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I'd get so worked up and emotional over this. I thought I could, you know, be calm and collected and cool. But you know what? The minute I think about that dude, all I think about is how he is probably seven different kinds of serial killer. And he is just weird and scary. And not weird in a cool way. Not weird in an acceptable way. He is unacceptable. And I will die on that hill. I'm sorry, Alan. You know what you did. If you're seeing this right now, Alan, you know why. You know exactly why. Come at me, bro. Come at me. I swear. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna drop it now. Alan, I'm watching you. But we're gonna move on to a different section to talk about the letters. Yes. There was lots of letters received by the press, by the police, and all of that. But there are three main ones. Like, I mean, most of them were hoaxes, and we know that, and they knew it right away. Um, but there's three in particular that people believe, for whatever reason, that they're legitimate. I don't, I don't know why they think that, but that's what they believe. The first letter is called Dear Boss, and that's because it starts with Dear Boss. Um, it was uh, dated September 25th and postmarked September 27th of 1888, and it was received by the uh, Central News Agency. And, uh, you know, they, 
kept it for a while and then passed it along to Scotland Yard on September 29th. So they kept it a couple of days before they handed it over to police. Which I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why they didn't either hand it over immediately or not hand it over at all. I don't know. Again, I wasn't there. I don't get to decide. Um, so... It was thought to be a hoax until uh, Catherine Eddowes was killed. And in the letter, it mentions uh, something about cutting the girl's ears off. And, you know, Catherine Eddowes had that piece of earlobe missing. So that that's what made them think it was uh, genuine after that. I don't know. I still think it was bullshit. But that's the first letter that was used the moniker Jack the Ripper. Like, he picked it himself, and that's what he wanted to be called. Like, stupid little bitch baby BTK. Oh, oh, you know what? I hadn't even thought about bringing Dennis into this. Okay, I'm trying not to lose my shit right now. Dennis Rader. I know he's not ever going to see this. But that guy, seriously, fuck that guy. I hate him so much. Dennis Rader is disgusting. Uh, yes, the floppy did you in, and I'm so glad, you fucking moron. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That dude, he just, it reminded me, because he got in contact with the police, and I mean, he was just an idiot and evil, Okay. Anyway, it said something about clipping the lady's ears off, and then it had the first reference to Jack the Ripper. The next letter is called Saucy Jack, and it was received October 1st, 1888, and it was, oh, excuse me, it was a postcard, not a letter, and it was received the same day it was postmarked um, by, the again, the Central News Agency, and it had similar handwriting and it references to the double event. I'm going to turn this... Look at how pretty she is. What do y'all think? That's my sweet Morgane. Um, and then the third letter is the From Hell letter. And you may remember the movie From Hell with Johnny Depp, Depp and uh, Heather Graham. Man, I lost it there for a second. It was received October 16th, 80, 1888. And it was received by George Lusk. So by this time... Um, Everybody was whipped into a mad frenzy, and they had formed um, the Whitechapel Vigilante Committee. And they these were basically, like, mm, vigilantes going around, like, accusing people of being the killer and trying to keep people safe, but actually also attacking other people on the street, and especially Jewish people. Um, because over... Oh... Was it Edo's body? I can't remember. There was some graffiti saying the Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. And so, because of that, people went into a damn frenzy and started accusing all the local Jews of being the killer. Which is stupid. But people were very stupid back then. Just as stupid as they are now. Okay. So, um, George Lusk is the guy that receives this letter. And it comes in a small box with half of a human kidney. And uh, it had a letter in it. And in the letter, he claimed to have fried and eaten the other half of the kidney. So, there's the letters. We've talked about all of our suspects. I think it was Alan. You're not going to change my mind on that. I know he did it. I know he's got time travel, and I know he gets up to some sick shit with that time travel. My daughter thinks it's a pterodactyl. Maybe they're working together. I, I'm open to that possibility as well. He could have gone back to the dinosaur times, gotten him a pterodactyl, went to uh, Victorian London, and murdered some people, and just covering this whole thing up. But I digress. Um, so... I mean, that's pretty much it, you guys. I hope that I gave you... A, it's, a, it's a very brief gloss over of what happened in general. Um, in order to do a deep dive into this, I would have to create a, a whole separate show just for Jack the Ripper. And I'm not going to do that. 
because fuck that guy. Um, I just really wanted to do this because of the Johnny Gill connection. And also, I thought it might drive a little more traffic to my page. I'm not going to lie. I hope it does. But, you know, whether it's good or bad attention, we shall see. But this is my Morgane. I think she came out very pretty. And see, I mean, I didn't plan it that way, but she kind of looks like one of Jack the Ripper's victims. Anyway, I just like drawing Victorian hairstyles and everything. So sometimes I'll dry, draw just the hairstyle. Sometimes I'll draw a face to accompany with it. And I, I drew her a few months ago and I just really liked the way she turned out. And I think she was perfect for this case. It took the right amount of time to color her and tell y'all what's going on. And I think she came out pretty well. Well, if you want to argue with me about who Jack the Ripper was or whether or not the women were sex workers, um, let me know down in the comments. Um, if you like what you're seeing, um, give me a subscribe. I'd love it. Like this video, share it, talk to people about it, let them know old Leo the Lefty is back after, like, I don't know, nearly two weeks of dropping off the face of the planet. And I hope to see you guys next time. I'm not sure what my next case is going to be yet. Um, I'll have to think about it. I'm thinking about doing a little history or something like that. So, we shall see. Um, but, thanks for joining me today. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. Uh, don't forget to subs subscribe. Bye.